I was, which I was, and you, you've brought up her not answering questions. You've also called her not competent. And, and I, on that, Nikki Haley has some advice for, well, her advice was for Donald Trump, but I guess it would apply to all Republicans, including yourself, her speaking on Fox and how you guys talk about Kamala Harris. Let me play this from Nikki Haley. Quit whining about her. The campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not. You can't win on those things. The American people are smart. Treat them like they're smart. And she also said it's not going to win talking about how she's not answering questions. Do you agree? Well, look, like I said in this entire interview, I've not talked about Kamala Harris's crowd sizes or anything like that. You talk, I am you, you talking said about that, her competency to lead said, this yeah, country. You said her Hold competency, on, but, but and you said clear, that she's not doing interviews, com- and those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said. Is, One second. This is what, th- th- those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said you guys mm-hmm. should not be talking about because it's not going to win you voters. What do you say to Nikki Haley? Well, first of all, what I'm talking about is about her competency to lead our country. And competency is based upon decision making and policies that you support. That's what it's always based upon. And if you look at her record in the U.S. Senate, if you look at the fact that she was there as a partner with Joe Biden, leading to one of the great economic collapses for working families in our country, because when you have massive weight, massive um, 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 inflation, when wages are down, adjusted for inflation, when people are having to make uh, decisions between the light bill and food, or housing and other things, that's a catastrophe for working families. It's devastating to middle-income Americans. Kamala Harris, that is her record. All right, guys, so we got to talk about this interview that Nikki Haley had with Brett Baer on Fox News that I really, really, really have a big problem with, okay? Because Nikki Haley is going to be asked about whether or not she is going to campaign on behalf of Trump in order to help him when and she completely dodges the question while at the same time claiming that Trump must win this election okay because right now she's low-key taking a victory lap uh over the fact that Kamala Harris is now the candidate for the Democrats and the polls are swinging in favor of Kamala Harris okay and she made a promise that if uh Trump is the GOP nominee then Kamala Harris would become president of the United States And I personally have a big problem with what Nikki Haley is saying on Fox News because to me, her actions are not matching her words. I do not think that she actually wants Trump to win. I think she's pretending that she wants Trump to win while at the same time not doing her part in order to help Trump win, especially with the type of voter that Nikki Haley says that Trump needs to win. And I think one of the reasons why Nikki Haley is doing this is because just like Kamala Harris, she is a political chameleon. She claimed that she was not going to run against Trump uh, if Trump decided to run for president in 2024, but she ran anyway. She broke her promise. She has showed us that she will lie to the American people uh, and do the exact opposite of what she says. I think she's trying to line herself up for 2028. Okay. This, I told you so campaign from Nikki Haley, uh, I think is a part of that. And this is what really bothers me is because I can see through uh, political chameleons like a Kamala Harris and a Nikki Haley. And I want to break down this interview that Nikki Haley is doing with Fox News just to give you guys some insights into why I feel like Nikki Haley here is really dropping the ball, um, especially considering how she's claiming that this is a must win election for President Trump. So without further ado, let's get into it. A couple of recent polls uh, have shown this bump that this enthusiasm that this new ticket has received. Uh, Reuters has registered voters at 4947 uh, with Harris leading and among young voters a big shift uh, going that way. Uh, NPR, PBS, Marist has at 5148 and with suburban women uh, Harris leading significantly. Will you go out and campaign? for the former president? Well, I think the first thing you need to ask is, you know, I said that early on, I said a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. 
I was always running against Kamala Harris. Republicans should not be surprised that we are now running against Kamala Harris. It was her all the time. There was no way Joe Biden, in the condition that we saw him, could take on the stresses of a presidential election. So, you know, that was something I believed in then. It's why I constantly referred back to her, because I knew that Kamala Harris was the person that we had. And look, what I'll say is it's not an issue of whether I go out and, and campaign for Donald Trump. He's decided the way he wants to do this. What I will tell you is the Republican Party needs to make a serious shift here. And the first thing is the Republican Party, Donald Trump, people here at Fox, quit complaining that she's not giving an interview. You don't need an interview from Kamala Harris. I take her at her word. I take her at her word that she wants to raise taxes for households over $100,000, that she wants to add a pharmaceutical tax and a health care tax. I take her at her word that she thinks that illegal immigrants should be able to vote and be given driver's licenses. I take her at her word that she wants to ban fracking and kill a bunch of U.S. jobs. Take her at her word. Despite the fact that the campaign has pushed back and put out statements and, and saying that her positions her, have changed. She has said this. Now, what Donald Trump needs to do is go out there and campaign every single day, telling the American people exactly what Kamala Harris has said. We are 80 plus days out. We need him to win. OK, so if this is what you actually believe, Nikki, then why is it that you're not committing to helping Trump win? Why is it that you're not doing what Byron Donalds is doing and going on CNN, going on MSNBC, going on ABC, going on NBC uh, and making the case for Donald Trump to be president of the United States. You're not doing that. But yet you're sitting on your high horse on Fox News pretending like you've won something when you've never won a GOP primary. You never come close to becoming president of the United States. But you're trying to pretend like you know it all. Because, oh, well, I said that Kamala Harris would be the nominee. Well, here's a news flash, Nikki. You weren't the only person predicted that. Vivek Ramaswamy was also predicting that as well, too. And so was a lot of people predicting that, yeah, Joe Biden wasn't going to be the nominee. Also, on top of that, uh, Nikki Haley is just extremely wrong and also ignorant, too, in regards to the current political landscape, okay? Because I'm telling you guys, I literally watch the media <laughs> for... A job, okay? If you haven't noticed, okay, I consume a lot of media throughout the day and I pick up on the patterns of behavior that is happening in the media and how they are trying to affect public opinion. This idea that Kamala Harris does not need to do an interview is absolutely ridiculous, okay? Because Republicans have been having the policy conversation. We have been talking about all of Kamala Harris's extreme positions. All of the Trump advertisements have been talking about Kamala Harris's extreme positions, but you know who hasn't been talking about Kamala Harris's extreme positions? the mainstream liberal media and why is it that they haven't been talking about kamala harris's extreme positions well it's because they are propping her up all of kamala harris's support is a result of the mainstream liberal media propping her up so when nikki haley says well stop criticizing the media for refusing to cover kamala harris and just talk about the policies and the issues yeah that would be great in the ideal world where, you know, you don't have as many people that are influenced by the mainstream liberal media and the propaganda that comes from the mainstream liberal media. Yeah, that, that would actually work in a world like that. However, that's not the world that we live in. Evidenced by the fact that Joe Biden, his poll numbers fell through the roof when the media actually decided to cover him in a way that they should have been covering him for the last three or four years. Had they covered him fairly the last three or four years, instead of kissing his ass, he would have been out a long time ago, right? And then we saw this same media then prop up Kamala Harris and look what's happening right now. So to try to say that, oh, well, the Republicans need to stop talking about the media refusing to interview Kamala Harris and Kamala Harris running away, um, I think that that's just ridiculous. Because up until now, there's been nothing but fawning coverage of Kamala Harris in the one line of attack that is actually stuck. Something that the mainstream liberal media has continued to talk about over the past few days is Kamala Harris not doing any interviews with the press. In fact, they are pressing the Kamala Harris campaign. Again, this is the only thing they're pressing her about is the fact that, yeah, she's not answering any questions. So we're getting some negative coverage here as a result of Republicans calling out the media, which is what Nikki Haley says that they shouldn't do. Uh, you know, Michael, I'm sure this is not going to be the first time you've heard this question, but the Trump campaign is also going after the vice president for not doing enough interviews, for not holding a press conference. 
Uh, would it kill you guys to have a press conference? Why hasn't she had a press conference? <laughs> Listen, the vice president and Governor Walls uh, have been busy crisscrossing this country since uh, the launch of this campaign and adding uh, Governor Walls to the ticket. You saw the ways in which uh, they went to, across the battleground states last week, uh, generating rallies of, of thousands, 10,000 here, 15,000 there. Uh, yeah. But, but Michael, you know, a campaign do, rally is not a press forward, conference. It's be I, inclusive. Do you mind if I cut in? I mean, you know, a campaign rally is not a press conference. Why hasn't she had a press conference? She's the vice president. She can handle the questions. Why not do it? We absolutely are going to do it. You hear her take questions as she's out on the stump. And she's, as she said last week, uh, we're going to be having a sit-down interview here before the end of the month. Uh, what she's going to be focused on and what this campaign is going to be focused on is communicating directly with the voters that are actually going to decide the pathway to 270 electoral votes. That's why she and Governor Walls to a press conference this week. The this past week. That's why we're doing a bus tour in Pennsylvania yeah. as we head into Chicago. And it's why we'll sit down for an interview before the end of the month. Uh, to make sure that we can have a deep dive conversation yeah. about the vision uh, that Kamala Harris has for where she wants to take this country and the contrast that we're going to have with Donald Trump. We're going to have yeah. plenty of opportunities but, to do that uh, throughout the Michael, rest of the month. Michael, one interview by the end of the month. I don't, I don't want to, you know, belabor this, but one interview before the end of the month. I mean, that's, that's not a lot. I mean, can you commit to a press conference before the end of the month? We will commit to directly engage with the voters that are actually going to decide this election. And that is going to be uh, complete with rallies, with sit down interviews, with press conferences, with all the digital assets that we have at our disposal. We are running a campaign that is built to communicate with the voters that are actually going to decide the pathway to 270 electoral votes. We are confident in the plan that we have in place and we're going to execute on that plan. Republicans are in a position where they're like, OK, well, at some point, Kamala Harris needs to come to the table to have a policy discussion to tell us what she believes so that we can actually really talk about why is it that she's flipping on the issue. And we all know evidence by the fact that Kamala Harris dropped out of the Democrat primary before a vote was cast that the more she talks, the worse that her approval gets, right? The more that people do not like her, the more that people see through her, the more that she talks. There's a reason why she's not talking. So to say that, oh, well, you shouldn't worry about uh, getting Kamala Harris to talk and her having to answer questions that she should be answering as a major party uh, nominee for president, to say that she shouldn't have to do that or that Republicans should not uh, call out the media for clearly trying to rig the election in her favor again it's just ridiculous it really is it, it just pisses me off because if nikki haley again really wants trump to win then she should be taking that case to the mainstream liberal media she should be doing exactly what she's telling everybody else to do she should be doing that herself last time i checked she was a part of the republican party last time i checked she ran for president last time i checked she's probably going to try to run for president in 2028 but again, what's happening right now? What's happening? Nikki Haley isn't proving to the MAGA core base that she needs to win in 2028 because regardless of what happens to Trump, whether he wins or loses, MAGA's not going anywhere. MAGA's not going. Any GOP nominee in 2028 uh, is going to need to have the base on their side. Nikki Haley does not have the base on her side, and she's not doing a damn thing in order to try to earn that support. Because what she should be doing, instead of going on Fox News and trying to lecture other Republicans on what they should be doing, she should be doing exactly what she claims is going to work, right? She should be taking that case to CNN, to MSNBC, to NBC, to ABC, but she's not. She's not. She should be trying to get the suburban woman to vote for Trump. She should be talking to them and saying, listen, I understand that you feel a certain way about his attitude. I understand that you might not like his personality, but this is why you should vote for him over Kamala Harris. Right. She should be doing that. And I get it. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like Nikki Haley and they say, oh, well, you know, she shouldn't, you know, do anything. Right. We rather just not have her. But listen, guys, it's going to take everybody coming together. Right. Including people like Nikki Haley, who's a different type of Republican. Everybody has to come together and do their part if we want to win. Right. But what cannot happen is that you cannot have these Republicans sitting on the sidelines, pointing fingers at other Republicans, telling them what they need to do, while them themselves aren't doing anything to help Trump win. She barely endorsed Trump. Barely. She only did it because she was forced to do it at RNC, again, because she wants to run in 2028. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not fooled by this. I'm not fooled by this because I don't want to hear anything about what all the other Republicans should be doing when you are a prominent Republican and you can be doing more 
to make the case on behalf of the American people. Because, again, it's different to hear a man say something versus a woman. Where are all the women at? Right? Where are all the GOP women that should be out here making the case on behalf of President Trump? Right? We need to see a whole lot more of that. I think that is one thing that definitely should change. Yeah, we need to get the women in the GOP to go out and to really, really, really make the case, right? To take the case directly to the women that Trump is going to need in order to win. And Nikki Haley could be leading the charge on that if she put her feelings aside and actually do her own part in order to help Trump win. But again, she doesn't care if Trump wins because in her mind, regardless of whether or not Trump wins, she believes that she's going to be next up. And this is why she dodged the question in regards to whether or not she's going to go out there and campaign on his behalf, which she should. OK, she don't have to campaign in deep red places. No, she needs to be campaigning in those Rust Belt states. OK, in New Hampshire and these other states that uh, potentially Trump could win. Right. And some of these more moderate states. Yeah, she should be campaigning there on behalf of Trump, helping him out. But again, she's not even committing to that. But at the same time, she's saying that it was a must win election. Well, if it's a must win election, if you really feel that way. Why is it that you are noncommittal in doing your part? Again, that's what bothers me about these people. She's more concerned about taking a victory lap and saying, I told you so, rather than doing what she should be doing in order to help. But again, she's doing this because she wants to run. But I'm telling you right now, Nikki Haley, you're not next up. You're not next up. There are three people that are currently ahead of you, right? Vivek Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis, J.D. Vance. I believe all three of those individuals would beat Nikki Haley in a 2028 uh, GOP primary as of right now. So again, you know, I, I, I personally, I'm not liking this from Nikki Haley. I, I really don't. This right here, this type of shit really pisses me off. But you got to go out and do the work. And the one thing Republicans have to stop, don't quit whining about her. We knew it was going to be her. She's not going to give an interview. They're going to hold out as long as they can. That's their right. They can do it. That doesn't mean we can't talk about what she believes in. And we should be getting out there and doing that. And more than anything, this is not an election for just the MAGA vote. Trust me, Donald Trump has that. Republicans need to be fighting for suburban women, for college educated, for independents, for moderate Republicans and conservative Democrats. They want to be asked for that. The Republican Party needs to go out for them. Talk to them. Talk to them about the fact that Americans, the average American homeowner is now 49 years old. And do you Talk think that's not them. happening now? Do you think no, that this campaign is, is floundering on that point? I no, see, again, Nikki Haley, why are you not doing that? That's my question, okay? I understand what you're saying, but again, it's different having a man go out and do it versus a woman, especially considering how Kamala Harris is a woman, right? And everything that a man says, they're going to they're gonna find a way to define some sexism, right? Some racism in order to deflect from the policy conversation, which is what they've been doing the whole time, right? This is what they've been doing the whole time, okay? Republicans have been trying to talk about policy. We have been trying. However, the mainstream of media, they're not trying to. Kamala Harris is not trying to. Nobody's trying to. They don't want you to know what Kamala Harris believes. They want to make Kamala Harris as ambiguous as possible so that people don't know what they're voting for, okay? So, yes, Republicans can go out here and say all day long how extreme Kamala Harris is, but if Kamala Harris doesn't answer any questions, if the mainstream liberal media doesn't cover it, if they don't actually have the real conversation, it's only going to be so effective because at that point, you're only talking to an echo chamber, right? But again, this idea that Republicans aren't talking about policy or that they aren't making the case is asinine. It is ridiculous. No, it is the media and Kamala Harris that are not talking about policy. They're the ones trying to make it about identity, racism, hate, bigotry. This is what they're doing, right? This is not what we're doing. I want this campaign to win. But the campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not. You can't win on those things. The American people are smart. Treat them like they're smart. Do you think the you know, it's, it's amazing? She says that. But the whole Democrat Party platform is built on treating Americans like they're dumb. Right. And it seems to work. Right. It, it seems to work.
So I'm just saying, I, I got questions here. But again, these accusations that Trump or Republicans are trying to make the election about Kamala Harris being black or crowd size. Or, no, these are small little things that come up because the mainstream liberal media wants to talk about it. And they blow it out of proportion to try to make it seem like that's the only thing Republicans are talking about. But 99% of the time, what Republicans are talking about is the policy. For example, the interview at the beginning of this video that you guys saw, Byron Donalds was talking about inflation. And he was linking the policies of the Biden administration slash Kamala Harris to inflation. And he talked about the fact that she's not answering questions as a sign that, hey, they don't feel like she is very competent in regards to answering these questions. And then you know what the CNN analyst does? You know what she does? She says, well, you're saying that Kamala Harris is incompetent. Nikki Haley said that you guys shouldn't say that, right? You shouldn't make your campaign about that, which again, it really blows my mind because somebody being competent is a substantive conversation about whether or not they're qualified for a job, right? If you're incompetent, then you're not qualified for a job. But now, because you got bird brain Nikki Haley <laughs> going on Fox News saying that Republicans shouldn't say that, now you got CNN, instead of, again, focusing on the policy discussion, now they want to talk about, oh, well, Nikki Haley said that you guys shouldn't talk about things like that. You shouldn't say that Kamala Harris is in incompetent, even though the broader conversation in and of itself was about inflation. So Nikki Haley is actually making the problem worse while complaining about it because she should not have said this out loud. She should not have went on Fox News and said this out loud because now the mainstream liberal media is going to point to Nikki Haley and say, see, even Nikki Haley says that Republicans aren't doing anything but talking about Kamala Harris's raise and a bunch of things that aren't relevant to the American people when that's not the case. That's simply not the case. Campaign is missing the mark on those things. I think the campaign needs to focus. That's the main thing. Look, this is a winnable election, but you need to focus. Who is your target market? Your target market is suburban women, college educated, independents, and conservative Democrats. That's your target market. The target issues are the economy, the fact that Kamala wants to raise taxes, the fact that she's taken money from those that didn't go to college and has given it to those that did, the fact that when Afghanistan fell, the fact that when they lifted sanctions on Iran, the fact that when they, you know, actually said that they would help Israel and then pulled back, where was Kamala when that happened? She was sitting right next to Joe Biden in the Situation Room. This administration is Kamala Harris's administration. Everything that has happened is hers. So define her on that way. Talk about those issues. Talk about it, how dangerous it is to expand the Iran deal and get back in it. Talk about how dangerous it would be to do an arms embargo on Israel. Talk about how dangerous it was that Afghanistan fell. And talk about how dangerous it is that you have a presidential candidate and a vice presidential candidate that have never dealt with foreign policy and their way of dealing with it is we shouldn't treat Russia and China as adversaries. That's what they said. You were very proud. Yeah, so <sighs> this is the neocon coming out. Anyways, you guys get the gist of what's going on here. Um, I don't like this from Nikki Haley. I think that Nikki Haley should not have said this because again, now this is gonna be used against Republicans. It is making a problem worse uh, a problem that she's complaining about, by the way. That's the irony here. Um, but yeah, I don't want to hear anything from Nikki Haley unless uh, she comes out here and she starts to campaign on behalf of Trump in the places where she's going to be the most effective in order to get those voters, right? That target market that she's talking about, again, those people are people that she allegedly does very well with. So unless Nikki Haley is going to come out here and actually do the work like she's demanding other people do, um, I don't really want to hear it, right? I don't want to hear any advice from Nikki Haley. Uh, she's not somebody that's trustworthy. She's just somebody that's more interested in playing the I told you so game for political gain uh, in order to enhance her chances of being the GOP nominee in 2028. And um, yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen, right? I just don't think it's going to happen to her. Uh, but hey, we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.